so this is <clears throat> excuse me this is another article um that i basically came across on seeking alpha which is basically an investment an investment site and it says california urges to pause the use of a particular batch of the moderna vaccine after basically a mass allergic reaction uh, so it says here uh, and of course this was also posted in the new york times right this is in the new york times this was posted yesterday it says california recommends pausing a batch of moderna vaccines after possible severe allergic reactions and this was also posted on the california department of public health this was posted on the 17th uh, in sacramento california it says the state epidemiologist paused excuse me um eric uh, dr erica s pan uh issued the following statement excuse, the following statement recommending providers pause the use of the moderna vaccine due to possible reactions that are under investigation of course our goal is to basically monitor what's going on it says that there were fewer than 10 who had required medical attention so there were quite a few number of people who had an allergic reaction to the vaccine and i talked about this in it says it says, it says here it says all appear to be experiencing a possible severe allergic reaction um during the standard observation period a type of adverse uh, a type of adverse event that the cdc reports some people have experienced when receiving the vaccine and again this isn't you know the the pain in the arm this isn't the potential chills that they're referring to like kind of like when you feel the general malaise when you feel like you're getting a little bit of achiness um, this is severe anaphylactic reaction this is the closing of the throat a person breaking out um, in a rash or in hives, um, tachycardia, or low blood pressure. For those that remember, um, there was that nurse, I think she was in, uh, in somewhere in Texas where she had taken the vaccine and then moments later she was like, oh, I feel, I feel kind of dizzy and then she collapsed, right? And she said that it was related to the pain. She gave some excuse that uh, whenever she experiences pain, that she faints. Now, mind you, that person was a, a CCU nurse, right? So she's a cardiac cath nurse. And she said, even if I have like a hangnail, which is basically like a piece of skin that sticks out on the edge of your nail, she said, if I bump up against something that I just pass out. And I'm like, if that was the case, you would not be a critical care nurse. Like <laughs> there's no way that you would even have a driver's license, let alone a nursing license. Because if you're, if you're a patient, um, was in the middle of a procedure or your patient was having some sort of an emergency and you banged up against something and you collapsed and that patient died like the hospital would just like not be willing to take on that kind of liability more than likely what this nurse was experiencing was an anaphylactic an anaphylactic reaction and of course we'll go over to let's even go over to the cdc yes that's okay continue over to the site and so that we can take a look at some of the severe allergic reactions are spoken of here right so you can look at the link talking about what they mean by um, if you have a non-severe allergic reaction or what a severe allergic reaction of course they recommend what to do this is typically as it says here this is also known as anaphylaxis uh, which is when when getting the vaccine it says an allergic reaction is considered severe when a person needs to be treated with epinephrine or an epipen or if they must go to the hospital and these all of these individuals required uh, to be managed by a professional so all of these individuals needed some form of medical intervention and this was during uh, an, an administration where they were administering multiple people uh, for the vaccine and about 10 of them went into anaphylaxis. And as a result, they said, we need to stop giving out the vaccine. One of the things that's also important to where, where they make a point down here, it says, while less data exists on adverse reactions related to the Moderna vaccine, a similar vaccine shows uh, that the expected rate of anaphylaxis is approximately one in a hundred thousand. And so you might be thinking, well, that doesn't seem like that many, right? One out of every hundred thousand people who get a similar vaccine, and they're more than likely referring to either the Pfizer vaccine, since they're all basically messenger RNA uh, vaccines. 
but when you actually look over and we're going to we're going to flip over here now this is a science organization it's the american association of advanced science and this is an article that they put out and we're going to dr basically drop all the way down here i will link this article as well that talks about uh possible where is it right here um, but what people may be experiencing an allergic reaction could be related to um, PEG, which, which stands for uh, polyethylene glycol, which is basically in both of both of the vaccines. But what I what I wanted to touch on was right here, right here. It says in most other vaccines, like, for example, the flu vaccine, it says anaphylactic reactions can occur with any vaccine, but are usually extremely rare and here's the point about one per one million doses right so according to uh, the california department of health they've basically said that according to their data that their data is is suggesting that one in every 100,000 are potentially experiencing severe allergic reactions to the Moderna vaccine. So you're basically experiencing 10 times the amount of people who are having an anaphylactic reaction uh, by comparison to your standard everyday vaccine, um, like for example, the, the flu shot. And of course, a lot of this is not foreseen, especially this is probably why in my previous article, talking on my previous video talking about what happened in uh, Norway, where in Norway, when they started administering the vaccine, to older individuals within one particular nursing home that they experienced 23 deaths just within that nursing home when they started administering the vaccine. More than likely, many of these individuals, of course, were having a severe anaphylactic reaction and as a result had lost their life. This is probably why in China, they said if you have comorbidities or if you are above, I believe it was the age of 60, if I'm wrong, uh, please let me know in the comments, a comment section where in China, they said that they would not be administering uh, the vaccine to individuals who had comorbidities like diabetes or for older individuals, more than likely because they're going to be experiencing some form of anaphylactic reaction. And many of these older individuals would not survive an anaphylactic reaction. That, and of course, it, since they were giving this to people primarily in the nursing home, that's more than likely why they're experiencing a larger number of deaths because you typically don't have the, the resources necessary uh, basically to preserve many of these older individuals alive in case of an emergency. Yes, you'll be able to perform things like CPR while you're waiting for EMS, but for many of these older individuals who are typically on the frail side, they will experience a much, they are more than likely to experience a harsh reaction. It's also interesting, like I've stated in my previous video, that according to the hospital where I work at, we've received numerous emails with videos and they do like, um, you know, these live calls for people to watch on Zoom. And of course they always tell, because originally they were stating for people who had a, you know, a history of allergies, like for example, if you were allergic to to um, shellfish or strawberries, eggs, etc. that typically those individuals don't take vaccines because they will have an allergic reaction. So many of these individuals more than, I, 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 again, I, from what I've been told is that there's nothing for, because there were those individuals who, who were stating, I have a history of allergies. Should I still take it? And they were saying yes, because there's nothing in the vaccine that should cause you, like for whatever it is that's in the flu vaccine that you would normally be allergic to, well, that's not in there. So if it's not in there, then what is it necessarily that is causing these individuals to have such severe allergic reactions? And of course, we don't know the history of these individuals. If the people who they were administering it to were having uh, had a history of allergic reactions, it doesn't really go into details, but this is just some information that is, of course, pertinent that your healthcare provider, whether it's your nurse like myself or your doctor, should be giving you this sort of information so that you can make an informed decision about whether you, whether or not you want to take this vaccine for a disease that the CDC themselves has a 99.9% .9 survivability rate for individuals, basically for anybody under the age of 70, um, overwhelmingly have had the had the disease 
and basically come out just fine without having to worry about the risk of going into anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is very severe and it can cause individuals to lose their lives prematurely, especially for a new medication that really doesn't have a lot of uh, research behind it because typically, if for those who don't know, typically a vaccine at minimum is five years, more than likely 10 years before they actually start administering it to the public. This vaccine was, of course, put together basically in the span of a few months for a novel virus that people just found out existed, according to the details, um, last year in the beginning of 2020. And of course, by the end of 2020, they already had a vaccine, uh, even before the end of 2020. As if you actually do a little bit, a little bit of digging, Moderna had their vaccine two weeks after they basically had spliced the the uh, the genome for the for the virus there's you can look up the article yourself two weeks after they had spliced up the the dna of the virus and they sent out the information to the world so all the different scientists could take a look at it two weeks after that they had their vaccine and again moderna has never brought a drug to market. This is easily verifiable with a simple Google search. Again, I did a video on that one as well, talking about how Moderna has never brought a drug to market. They've tried to bring drugs to market and they were never successful at bringing a drug that they could actually sell to the market. And for some reason, they were allowed to bring their particular vaccine to market for a company that this is basically their first success story and typically vaccines are difficult to make especially for a coronavirus they have been trying for decades to find one for SARS and to find one for the common flu and they have never been successful primarily because whenever they did test the vaccines on animals the animals all died the primarily ones would be animals like ferrets Ferrets typically have the very similar active immune system to humans. And what they found when trying to uh, come up with a vaccine for SARS, which is also a coronavirus, that the animals, when they experience coming into the wild with the with the uh, with the wild type uh, disease, with the wild type uh, coronavirus, that they die. They had a more they had they had basically a stronger reaction to the wild type virus that caused all of them to die and that's basically why they stopped because they, they were not successful in being able to create a, a vaccine where the animals just didn't die and of course that's why they didn't more than likely utilize animal testing during uh, this particular vaccine and just basically jumped straight into human trials and of course every time someone dies or someone has some sort of an allergic reaction they always want to quietly dismiss them as you know being anecdotal but of course this is information that is also that is important to realize is important to understand and for important for you to discuss with your healthcare professional when you're deciding whether or not that you want to take this medication and inject it into your body thanks for watching and i'll check you next time